Sun's out, time to fly the 250. Now I haven't flown properly, especially with this 250, for almost a year. So this could go really badly. <laughs> in one piece that's the main thing right i'm gonna try and put together some sort of weekly video to show off all sorts of stuff lots of other people are going to be getting into radio control stuff through drones through quadcopters helis planes if you're interested in that then great because i'm going to do a fair amount of that tesla are now coming onto the scene now i have the first model 3 reservation in the uk so i'm hoping to provide some sort of unique insight into that process i'll try and focus on different things each week this week I'm going to try and focus on the LEAF. Nissan LEAF is an electric vehicle for use, those of you that don't know. Um, the LEAF has a reasonable range, about 60-70 miles, which I was using to get to work on a daily basis. So uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't think it's possible. It's perfectly possible. I've been doing it for months. So. Today I'm going to talk about LEAF Spy on the phone. LEAF Spy is an app for your phone, for Android or iOS, you can use to communicate with the LEAF. So I have a Gen 1 and a very common issue with the Gen 1 is that the range meter or the uh, GOM, gasometer, is incredibly uh, pessimistic at times and you can't rely on it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use a OBD2 port extension lead to truly see what's going on with the LEAF. So let's start her up. This is the VPEAK, VP01. Um, this is Wi-Fi. I've tried others before. This one, for example. And anything that works on Bluetooth, I can't get to work very well, even with Android. So, give up on those. I'll give this a few seconds. Here we go. Right. So, prove the switch works. So, now that's com all communicating through this extension lead. The main thing with Leaf Spy that makes it so useful is that you just get an instantaneous reading of your battery. You know exactly what percentage you're charged to, exactly what state of charge you're in, exactly how many um, gids you've got. Great, you know, you can instantly see how far you're going to go and what you expect to be able to get. So if you've got 160 watt hours per kilometer, for example, on your journey to work, you can just adjust this up and down until you find the closest uh, figure and you can say, okay, with the current range, I can go that far. Now, there's no way you can do that with standard leaf. So, really useful. It's really revolutionized my leaf travel, at least. I think it's absolutely necessary for uh, any unknown trips. This gasometer is just hopeless. You see the difference now? That's a typical journey for me, 160 watt hours per kilometer, you know. But the leaf reckons I'm gonna get 86. Right, so now with the OBD2 port extension lead, it's time to mount it in the leaf. So here we've got the um, OBD2 port scanner. The cable then goes round underneath. We've got the switch here. I'll put some double sided tape on that. It then loops back round and then into the port. Right then, time to find some tape. And looking for tape means delving into the tools of the trade. Let's see if we've got anything suitable. Gonna need scissors. Scissors, got the tape. Time to do some sticking. Right, so power up the leaf, connected. There we go. And now flip the switch again. There it goes. Stopped. Successful. Hope you found this helpful. Uh, if anyone is looking to use Leaf Spy, um, I would definitely recommend an extension lead because the experience I've had is that the Wi-Fi is quite hungry on the battery. 
So if you leave this plugged in for ages, you will tend to find the battery runs down. And when you've got a switch, you can avoid the battery drain. So at least by just gives you an accurate picture of what's going on. That's the thing I think Nissan missed with this. Uh, future episodes, I hope to run through the surround camera system I've got here, the interior LED lighting, the new daytime running lights I'm using, probably get some cycling in. Session started. Great day for a cycle. Look at the sky. And this is the problem with cycling. There's always traffic. Unless... Now it starts to get tough. Almost the lowest gear. Only, only 100 meters vertically to go. And we're back. Let's see how Google thinks we did. 126 calories, no way. Session completed. Right, off to Bristol via Nissan to pick up this tripod. Time to see if we can put Leaf Spy to work. Running late as usual. The gasometer is saying 79 kilometers or just under 50 miles. However, Leaf Spy is telling me I have more like 35 miles. A day in the life of a Gen 1 Leaf driver. The other really useful thing about Leaf Spy is that it will tell you, based on your current trip, what your energy efficiency is. So at the moment it's unrealistically low because we've just been down several hills, but we'll see it will average out over the course of the journey. charge my leaf yeah i can't see why not i just try and get this car moved sure got about a half hour probably. yeah yeah yeah. i don't need much right just no me worries. topping up yeah thanks we've got 30 miles on the gasometer and a little under 30 miles maybe how was it 25 miles on the leaf spy app do you remember it started at 80 kilometers or so about 50 miles <laughs> I love the Nissan chargers, free and fairly reliable actually, as long as you can actually get to the station and no one is parked just randomly in the middle of the road. Ah, oh, rookie mistake. You should remember to turn the car off before you start the charge. So another great feature of Leaf Spy is now we've sat the charger and turned the car back on and we've got almost 30 kilowatts going back in. You can see the charge going back in something that the manufacturers never seem to think people want to know but actually having a, a readout just just how many kilowatt hours you got left in the battery it's so useful right been here for quite a while now probably time to head off Bristol Council are going to be putting in EV access to bus lanes now right now that seems like a brilliant idea two lanes nose to tail traffic and sat in it for about 10 minutes bus lane completely clear been a pretty handy tripod I'm actually kind of annoyed <laughs> that I'm selling it because um, I tried to fit my new one in my rucksack and it's uh, just a little bit too big so but it's fine I have a Joby gorilla pod anyway are you gonna tell a story every day are you gonna do it daily well, or it's probably gonna be weekly because I'm, I'm at the University of Bath doing electronics I really can't 
record the time it takes. Yeah, I probably it's got time like an hour and a half of footage from today, and it's cut down to about ten minutes. Yeah, good. Seems seems nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Seems good. Great. Cool. The time lapses that tripod has done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm super into Casey Neistat and yeah, that's, all that's, that malarkey. That's the guy, that's the guy. Who inspired one of, you? One of whom, one of whom. Yeah, yeah, yeah fully, fully electric, no engines in here, although it looks like it does. Yeah, like a charge for it. So, yeah, yeah, I've, um, well, you can charge it from a standard three-pin socket. That's what people don't understand. These cars are just so versatile. You know, you petrol, you have to go to a petrol station and buy some petrol. And if that one's broken, then you're stuffed and you have to go for so another one. So it goes for 65 miles from one charge? Yes, yeah. So if you're on the motorway okay. or something, you can charge at all the motorway services now. There's a provider that we've got but those. Te so. Tesla's like they're obviously way more expensive, but they're sort of two hundred and sixty miles or something, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. Anyway, right, yeah. Well, great yeah. to see you. Right now I have a tripod. Now all I need is a big camera. Right, got the tripod. So now back to Bath. interior light a lot brighter than stock I think it's approximately four times brighter um, so that's the sort of dim mode I now turn them on fully like a fluorescent tube if you flash your full beam you want to be able to sort of see your way to the door or whatever really quite useful there we go and they turn off the best thing about a compact tripod fit straight into a rucksack. Cool. Hope you've enjoyed today's vlog. Next time I'm going to be making a GoPro adapter for this camera thread on this 3D printer. So don't forget to like and comment if you have any ideas or general feedback and join me next time for next week's vlog. Thanks for watching. Sun's out, time to fly the 250. That's not the 250.